Hi, <laughs> welcome back to Earth Sky. Um, hang on, a little technical difficulties here. <laughs> I'm Jebra, your astronomy friend, and I'm back here to talk about the Black Moon. Okay, so there's one coming up on August 22, 23. Uh, and what is the Black Moon? When we have uh, two full moons in a single month, we call that a blue moon. And that's a relatively recent name and definition. But now, okay, there we go. Okay, now it seems that social media influencers and journalists have begun using the name Black Moon for the second new moon in a single month. So we'll have a black moon on August 22, 23, but its definition is slightly different. That is, a blue moon can also be the third of four full moons in a season, and now apparently so can black moons. So this black moon that's coming up uh, will be the third of four full moons between the June solstice and the September equinox. Who decides these things? And as it turns out, you and I do. Uh, moon names are part of folklore, not official astronomy. And that means that we, the folk, decide. But before we go on, what is a new moon anyway? Um, we all know what a full moon is. It's a moon on the opposite side of Earth from the sun. And so we see all of its lighted half or day side and a new moon has moved in its orbit to be between the Earth and Sun. It's the moon phase that causes total solar eclipses. Every month at new moon, the moon travels across the sky with the Sun during the day. Uh, its day side is turned entirely away from us. So you might say that a new moon is the opposite of a full moon. And new moons leave the night sky dark. So that might help explain the black moon's connection to Wicca culture. More about that in a moment. But first, black moon fun facts. Okay, here's number one. You can't see a black moon. So remember, new moons are always up in daytime. They're hidden in the sun's glare. And when the sun sets, there's no moon at all in the night sky. Fun fact number two, seasonal black moons, like the one coming up on August 23rd, can happen only in certain months, February, May, August, and November. They always come a month before an equinox or a solstice, in this case, uh, a month before the September solstice which is coming up about a month from now. Fun fact number three, the term black moon apparently did spring from Wiccan culture in the last decades of the late 20th century. I didn't read this book, but I heard that Everyday Moon Magic by Dorothy Morrison does mention black moons. So I'm an astronomy person, and as an astronomy person, uh, I can recall reading about black moons uh, in astronomer Stephen Odenwald's great blog called The Astronomy Cafe. That was decades ago. Uh, how many decades? I'm afraid I couldn't tell you. I tried to track Stin down to ask him, but I couldn't track him down. So Stin, if you're out there, please get in touch. But I do recall that he said that the black moon came from Wicca. So chat GPT also mentioned that connection when I asked it about black moons in this past weekend. So blue moons and black moons uh, follow some of the same rules, but they have entirely different histories. Blue moons stemmed from a mistake in this 1946 article in Sky and Telescope magazine. The writer, Hugh Pruitt, mistakenly interpreted something from the old Maine farmer's almanac. He was probably the first 
to suggest a blue moon as the second of two full moons in a month. And starting in the 1970s, astronomy writers like me uh, got the ball rolling by talking about blue moons and broadcasting the fact that a blue moon could be the second full moon in a month. But it really took off when the game Trivial Pursuit said that a blue moon was the second full moon in a month. And you can read about this history in a study of blue moons by a folklorist, Dr. Philip Hiscock at Memorial University of Newfoundland. Uh, we'll add that link to the post description. So that old Maine Farmer's Almanac, by the way, is the one that defined a blue moon as the third of four full moons in a season. And that's how we came to have two definitions of blue moons. And as for black moons, uh, they appear to be following that same rule. So at, uh, I'm not a folklorist. Uh, maybe another, fo maybe a folklorist will get interested as Phil Hiscock did with blue moons. But in the meantime, we don't really know exactly the origin of the term black moon. But we do have some more black moon fun facts for you. First, we'll have a super black moon on August 20th, 2028. It'll be a new moon that meets the prerequisites for being a black moon but it also nearly coincides with perigee, the moon's closest point to Earth for that month. We'll add a link to supermoons in the post description. And our final fun fact, as you admire this beautiful image of sunrise from the moon, and that is that we'll have three black moons in a row in the year 2033. Uh, if you're okay with a third, definition of black moons, and that is no new moon in a month means a black moon. So I don't really even know what that means. But yes, apparently another emerging definition of black moon is no moon in a month means a black moon. So in 2033, the new moons of January 20th, uh, January 30th, excuse me, and March 30th will be the second uh, in those months. And there will be no new moon in February. So for true believers, that's a black moon triple whammy. But here's what is certain. What many will call a seasonal black moon, the third of four new moons between the June solstice and September equinox, will fall at 606 UTC on August 23rd. That's 106 a.m. Uh, central daylight time. So the black moon might fall on August 22nd for you, depending on your time zone. And a black moon, like any new moon, isn't visible in Earth's night sky. It's a great time to stargaze because without the moon in the sky, the sky is dark and you can see more stars. So that's uh, especially true if you venture out to a dark sky site we invite you to come to the stargazing link at earthsky.org to find one near you. One Earth, one sky, Earth Sky.